welcome back. I'm just, I'm, t- <laughs> it's, it's spooky time, okay? And I have arrived back from my little projects just in time for a few spooky tutorials. And this one's going to be a stone tutorial because we are making a tombstone or a gravestone, however you want to put it. But it's going to be stylized and pretty and fun. It's going to look like this. And I really hope you enjoy it. It's going to the stone playlist. And uh, it's going to be one of the couple of spooky tutorials that is going to come out before October is over, hopefully. (laughs) Anyway, so with all of our tutorials, as you know, the brush we're going to be using is the Hard Round Pressure Opacity Brush. And the pressure control here is turned off because I like a nice solid brush experience. Now, this is in Photoshop, obviously, and this Hard Round Brush here is pretty much in every single digital art program you can find. It's named something different in almost all of them, but it's essentially just a hard round brush. If you see a brush with a circle and it's kind of solid, that's probably the brush you're looking for. And when you press harder, it becomes more opaque. And when you soften up, it becomes more see-through or transparent. We're gonna be using our stone colors here. And because we are advancing in our knowledge of how to do these things, we're gonna be using another tool, the lasso tool. Now, the lasso tool is super, super powerful. And as you saw here, I clicked and held, and it showed this other bit of options here. And we're gonna go to the polygonal lasso tool. That means it makes straight lines, no matter where you pick, until you come back to your original point and click it with a little circle next to it. See this little circle next to the cursor? That means it's a complete lasso. And so we are going to just make a simple, gravestone shape and we're keeping in mind the 3d aspect of this notice how we started with just basic corners here but then we kind of made a flat one and i'll show you why in a second but first now that we've made our little shape we can just pick our a mid color one of these blues here and we can just paint in that thing right there and that's our that's our main silhouette silhouette's done silhouette's one of the easiest parts which makes things nice and fast, nice and easy. So we are going to now make a new layer. We're gonna right click the layer above it, the new one, and we're gonna do create clipping mask. And if you've come this far, then you know what that does. It makes so everything we paint inside the mask is only going to apply over the layer that it's masked to. Now, the reason we put these little notches up here is because we want to make a, a 3D looking stone. And it's not a perfect, you know, flat thing. You gotta make sure it's got some depth to it. And you see by just doing that, you can already see the width of the stone that we're making. And we just hold down Alt, or if you're on Procreate, you can tap and hold onto the screen, and it'll bring up your eyedrop tool. We're just gonna pick that color. And we can just paint on. And these are very fast, very simple. Now, so again, for most of these tutorials, we like our light source coming from the top left. Now, it's gonna depend entirely on however you like your light source and wherever you like it, but generally speaking, you know, the basic rule exists. If it's close to the light source, it's bright. If it's facing away from the light source, it's dark. You know, basic shading stuff. But because this top area is closer to the light source, closer facing, it's a little brighter than this far side one here. And make sure our eraser is the same as the brush. We can just clean this up a little. Widen that up just a little bit. All right, now we're gonna take this darker color and we're gonna now add a little bit of a rim here. So we're just gonna follow along. This is stylized, so don't worry about being too close, too accurate. Give ourselves another quick little shift click a little guide for ourselves and we don't want this too wide we're gonna click that darker color because this one is facing away from our top left light source i'm just gonna clean that up a little clean this up a little all right now we get our lasso tool back i'm gonna find that edge the innermost edge because everything here is three-dimensional so for example this is the inner lip of this we want to get the inside so just at the inner edge of that dark spot. We're gonna make the rest, we're gonna visualize with our brains where the rest of the lip is. And now we can start drawing on the inside of this tomb. And we're gonna get our soft brush, again, in every program, it might be named something different, but it's just a really soft brush as, as far as, you know, see, look at this, super soft. And we are going to darken up a little bit near the top, near the lip, not too much. We're gonna darken up the bottom and then we can grab that color and we can shrink our brush a bit and just kind of gently make a nice even flow from dark to light by grabbing the lighter color, pushing into the darker color, grabbing the darker color, pushing back up, grabbing the middle color that they've created and kind of pushing it everywhere until you have this nice gradual 
flow from one color to the next. And because this lip is pretty sharp, we can actually grab that nice light blue. And we can paint in more of the lighter color. And if we paint too much, we can put the darker color back. And that sort of shows the shadow that the lip has created. Just gonna lighten it up a little more. Cool, doing good so far, doing good. Now, we're gonna use that lasso tool again, and now we're gonna paint inside the actual lip. So we're gonna get the inside corners first, and then we're gonna go on the outside corners. And this is just that dark spot that we made earlier. And now we can clean it up, get our hard brush back, make sure that's good and solid. With me so far, lasso tool is pretty cool. Lasso tool is pretty cool, and this is again lasso tools also on Procreate, as well as other as a, well as uh, other programs. And in Procreate, it's just your selection tool, and you can tap wherever on the screen. And now we're just going to work on this outside edge here. I'm gonna grab. Now we're gonna follow it along. We can pass it because this is a clipping mask. Remember, we don't have to worry about painting past our lines we've guided for ourselves. Now let's find that corner that we made. We'll line that up and we can just paint out there because clipping mask, powerful, powerful. I'm gonna grab that light blue, I'm gonna paint in. And this is sort of like we're giving ourselves lines to draw inside of. And right now this is the basic shape. So let's get a lighter color, soft brush. We're gonna gently lighten up the top of this little tombstone of ours. And we're gonna stylize this up nice and pretty, make it all kinda cool, as you saw in a little preview in the beginning. We're not going full bright yet. Full brights for the rims, full brights are special. We don't do full brights for no reason. We don't do that all willy-nilly, you know? But what we are gonna do is go to our hard brush, and we're gonna just give that little rim here facing the light source, see the far left of this side? We're gonna give that a little bit of love, gently though. It might be so small that you can barely see it. We're not gonna give it all the way down, we're just gonna give it from the top and just lighten up gently. So now when we take this off, you can sort of see that beautiful little rim we gave it. And we can clean that up if we need to. If you need to, you could double tap on Procreate to you know back up or Control Z in Photoshop here. And then we can get a soft brush and we're just gonna grab that color, push it up a little bit. And this is getting sort of very, very diffuse that rim we just gave so it doesn't have a hard stopping point. We like gradual, <laughs> gradual gradation from one color to the next. There we go, look at that, much better. Now for kicks and gigs, we are going to paint a face here. And you could paint a word, you could paint, you know, RIP, classic, classic kind of, you know, tombstone stuff, but we're gonna make a new layer for this, just so we don't mess up the layer we've already made. I'm gonna make a little, little skull from a hard brush. Let's make a little dome here. I'm just gonna bring these down a bit for some teeth. And this is just a silly little skull, okay? <laughs> no one's no one's actually grading you. Hard round eraser. Clean up that. Make it a little more interesting. We like sharp lines here, if possible. Sharp lines are cool. And we're gonna get a darker color. And let's just paint on the other side. Remember, light source is over here, coming down. Shadow sides over here. And if we want this skull to be sort of sticking out of the stone, then we just paint on the opposite side of the light source. The darker stuff goes on the opposite side of the light source. We're just eyeballing this right now. And you know how much I don't like to zoom in while I'm doing these tutorials. If 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 I wasn't, I'd be zooming in all the time. We're gonna make sure that the sides that are facing farthest away from the light source get the darkest color. So this room right here is pretty dark, and this room right here is pretty dark. And we can start dark here, but then lightens up closer towards the top almost invisible. And now let's give it a little, maybe a little sad face. Some sad eyes. Yeah, like that. Oh, oh, what a sad skelly boy. Let's not make it too complicated. Little dot. Let's give it a couple teeth. All right, let's get that darkest color. And we're gonna paint the inside of the, the rim of our eyes here. All right, now we're gonna get a lighter color. Not super bright, kind of light though. I'm just gonna gently touch, maybe a little brighter touch the underside of this eye just a bit, like that. Because this underside of the eye is facing up, you see. We gotta think of everything in a 3D space. And we're just gonna grab light color, and we're just gonna draw on the other side of the skeleton.
and you could hit the eyes again if you need to. And this sort of gives it that awesome 3D effect, right? Really cool, fun stuff. And that's our basic little skeleton face. RIP, sad, sad boy, RIP. <laughs> and if we want, we can add more, you know, lines and interesting stuff. But for now, let's just move on right along. And this is a little too dark. I'm actually gonna lighten it up. So we're gonna go back to our clipping mask layer. We're gonna lighten up that top area a bit. Y'all remember the stone tutorials earlier? I'm just gonna light this up just a smidge. Just a smidge. I remember how to do stone texture. This is your test. And a new layer. We can clipping mask this as well. Just so we don't ruin our lovely progress. We're gonna add little indentions with our big round brush. We're gonna do cracks in a bit, but first, just little indentions. And then we can grab that color. We can sort of paint in. We don't want these to be too distracting. We just wanted them to add a, just a little bit, just a touch of character. Remember, don't be boring, right? We're gonna grab the color near the holes that we made, little indentions. We're gonna paint inside them to give them our little, our little interesting cracks, a little bit of love. And we can also make the cracks disappear if you don't like them. And because it's a separate layer, you can even erase these if you want. Now, Let's do the fun part. Let's do the fun stylized stuff that we all love so much. We're gonna make some cracks and dents and dings. This is stone after all, stone likes to crack. So we're just gonna grab our dark spot and we're gonna start painting in little diamonds. Not uniform, remember, don't be boring, but a couple, different sizes. And wherever you make these, make sure you grab the shadow from the place that it's near. Different sizes, make things interesting. And now for the other side, we're gonna grab the light side of the place it's near. We're gonna paint the underside of that diamond. So we can clean it up. These are our stylized diamonds. And if it's facing too far away from the light source, even if it's even if it's the underside, remember, we don't want the light source to be betrayed. Gotta make sure everything's good. And then we can shrink our brush a bit and clean up those lines. Let's make a big old crack. We have the darkest color, because shadows inside shadows are even darker. I'm just gonna play around, find the right spot. And you know how uh, cracks work in stone? Multiple little lines. And these are new 3D objects, so make sure to give the rims very small depending on the lightest spot that you're in, give them a little bit of lighting because you've created new rims facing closer towards the light source. Let's add little pock marks. Remember from the stone tutorials, make little pock marks, kind of like these little smaller indentions, but very unique. We make a dark circle first, and then we grab the light and we clean it up, making sure there's still a rim in the area facing closest to the light source, because that's our shadow. juicy bits. You know how much you love juicy bits. Let's grab the lightest color, which is very close to white. We're just going to follow along the rim here a bit. Nice small brush. And we're going to kind of bleed this in to every corner gently. We're not doing this uniform. Remember, we're not making sure these are you know, the same width, the same brightness all the way across. That's not what we're doing. For stylized stuff, give it little bumps, you know, little, little ridges. It gives it a little extra character. And these diamonds here, we can even put 
some really bright stuff right down there, the bottom of the diamonds, but it depends. We want, remember the, the bright stylized rim, we like to make sure that those are the brightest closest to us. And this is kind of far, but this, that's our close spot. So we're gonna darken these up a bit. Still good to have them. We want them to be darker. And we can lighten up that a bit too. We don't want any spots that look too boring. I'm gonna lighten up these cracks. A little too harsh. Give a nice little rim there. Put a little bit of rim here. A little bit of rim there. Power of stylized artwork is incredible. Just gonna touch a bit of rim there. And this side is facing the light source. So don't worry about giving it too much rim until we get a little closer to the bottom here. But there's also a rim here we can lighten up very gently though. This, this rim is not facing the light source at all. So this one's gonna be really gentle. The edge facing the light source the most on our skeletal friend here, which we actually have to make a layer above it, don't forget, is this area right up here. Now, let's actually cut into this clean edge that we've created. So we went to our original shape layer that everything's clipped to. We're just gonna start cutting in a bit, varying the shape a tad, because we don't like clean, smooth lines on our stylized pieces. We only had that there as guides. Sorry if I get a little heated. You know, it's, it's a very near and dear topic to my heart. So we like to add shapes and shapes, remember, so cutting. Like for example, if you want to, you can make this super, super stylized and go root and just have this giant gash if you wanted to. It look, it would look really cool. Just if you do that, keep in mind, if you're adding a big old curve, you'll want to curve everything else accordingly because that's super stylized, which means that you would add a little extra shadow right there in the top. I can, I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of like that. So now what we're going to do is the thing that a lot of people don't like is we're going to grab all of our stone layers here of our tombstone and we're going to merge them. You can select them all and depending on whatever program you're on, you can merge them yourself. I have mine set up to control E as my hotkey for merge, but you can right click and then come down here to merge layers. And now it's one solid layer. So now let's actually do that cool curve idea. Just nice and not too crazy, nice and gentle. I like my shapes within shapes as much as the next artiste. I'm gonna do a bit over here too. So we can make a new layer clipping mask and now we can add the new rim we've created and lighten up this little section down here a bit because it's facing a little upwards now. We're gonna darken up this top area here, shrink your brush a bit if it needs to. And now let's grab that rim color and put the rim kind of back on. have a lot of y'all coming over here from TikTok. Welcome. Hopefully you find something you're looking for. All right, now we're gonna add a new layer above all that. We're gonna grab the grass. We can turn on the size thing now because when dealing with grass, if you remember the grass tutorial, let's add our dark grass first, our spooky grass. We just want that sharp edge, but kind of random. Remember, don't be boring. All right, now we're gonna add our lighter color grass just to blend a bit. And we're just gonna paint just one side of that grass. We only wanted the dark grass to give the lighter grass that we're gonna paint over it a bit of a shadow. 
Obviously, this would help a lot if you've already done the grass tutorial, as well as the stone tutorial, but I'm not here to judge. Maybe you already know how to paint grass and stone. I'm just going to clean this up a little. Now I'm going to chop up the bottom a bit, grab to our tombstone layer, clean this grass right there up a bit, I want it a little sharper. This is a nice, long, thin couple of grass, just to have some variation. All right, now we get to do a little bit of extra credit. And all that is, is I'm just gonna add our light source, which is up here. I have an entire layer already dedicated, which I'm gonna go over in a future video, by the way, about all these adjustment layers and stuff. But I have it set up in a nice little group with a nice mask. And all I gotta do, click that mask, get a nice little soft brush, and I could paint on the layers. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll see you back here in a second. And there we go. All right, that's our first spooky tutorial done. done. Finished, fantastic, you did great. Look at you go. That's your first bit. All right, stylized tombstone in the bag. Now, extra credit wise, you could add little stones down here. Usually there's multiple levels to a tombstone. You know, a gravestone usually sits on a little stone pedestal and you can have little rocks down here, same color, just same concept. You'll, you'll be fine. You'll be great. But that's a nice, fun little tombstone for you. And look forward to the next one. I'm thinking about doing webs and, like, blood magic. And hopefully I should be able to get those done and out the door for y'all pretty soon. Again, preferably before <laughs> October's over. But if not, you know, it, it is what it is. Hopefully you found that useful, helpful, entertaining. Like it if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Subscribe to see more. And thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever-loving out of you for supporting the ever-loving out of me. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.